Coffee and health. What time of day may be best? To address that, let's take a look at this recently published study. And if you want to check out the study yourself, it'll be in the video's description. So jumping right into the data. On the left, we've got coffee intake amount in cups per day from zero to one cups to more than three cups per day. And that's plotted against the HR. This is the hazard ratio or risk of death for all causes. So let's start with the data for the morning type. And this was defined as people who drank coffee from 4 to 11.59 a.m., so before noon. So for people who drank up to one cup per day, when compared with non-drinkers, that was associated with a 15% reduced risk of death for all causes. But we need to pay special attention to the data in parentheses. This is the 95% confidence interval. And here we can see that the upper bound for the 95% confidence interval is greater than 1.00. In other words, it's not a significant association. Now, for it to be a significant association, we would want both numbers within those parentheses to be to the left of 1. So in other words, instead of it being 1.01 on the right, it would need to be 0.99 or less. And that's not the case. So for people who drank up to one cup per day and in the morning, that was not significantly associated with a reduced risk of death for all causes. What about higher intakes of coffee? So one to two cups, two to three cups, and greater than three cups, each were significantly associated with a reduced risk of all causes. As you can see that the 95% confidence interval is now completely to the left of a hazard ratio of one. In terms of the risk reduction or associated risk reduction, for one to two cups, that was 16% lower risk. For two to three cups, that was 29% lower risk and greater than three cups was a 21% lower risk when compared with non-drinkers. So the maximum uh, risk reduction association was for people who indicated drinking two to three cups of coffee in the morning, so before noon. So to summarize that, when compared with non-drinkers, people who reported drinking greater than one cup of coffee, coffee per day is associated with a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk, reduced risk of death for all causes, when consumed in the morning. But what about people who indicated drinking coffee all day, not just in the morning, any time during the day? So for up to one cup, one to two cups, and two to three cups, we can see that that was not significantly associated with a reduced risk of death for all causes as the 95% confidence interval overlaps with one. You can see that the upper bound is 1.2, 1.12, 1.22, and the lower bound is below one, so it overlaps with one. These are not significant associations. But there could be good news for the all-day type coffee drinker. As people who indicated drinking greater than three cups per day, you can see that the upper bound for the 95% confidence interval is just outside of 1.00. So it's not far from significance. Now, does that mean that if you drink three cups of coffee per day, there'll be no associated risk reduction? There's just no way to know because it's a non-significant association. So when playing it purely by the statistical book, coffee intake was not significantly associated with all-cause mortality risk for the all-day drinking type. So for the morning type, is this just healthy user bias? So to account for that, model adjustment in this study included many variables that may impact the association for coffee intake timing with all-cause mortality risk and I've listed them all here. And I won't go through all of them, but just to highlight a few of them because it's important to know what they included in their model as many factors may impact the association for coffee intake timing with risk of death for all causes. So they included standard adjustment variables like age, sex, BMI, race, race ethnicity, family income, and education. But when it comes to healthy user bias, there are four additional variables that I'd like to see. The first is accounting for regular physical activity. And in this case, this was included in the model. So that's good news. And they defined regular physical activity as greater than or equal to 150 minutes of moderate intensity or greater than 75 minutes per week of vigorous intensity activity. Now, two variables two and three that can uh, account for healthy user bias are calorie intake and diet quality. And those two were included in the model. So here too is good news. Now, in terms of the diet quality index that they used, it was the Alternative Healthy Eating Index or AHEI. And the while that's a 
it's good that they included a diet quality index. It's important to note that the AHEI doesn't include the majority of ultra processed foods. It does include whether or not people indicated drinking sugar sweetened beverages and fruit juice, which is junk food relative to eating whole food. Uh, so it, that's one limitation of the AHEI. On the other hand, people who are eating a lot of junk food aren't eating a lot of real food. And that would be indicated by a low diet quality score, which would be captured by this diet quality index. So it's good news that they included the, this diet quality index, the AHEI, when it, trying to account for healthy user bias. Now, the fourth variable that I'd like to see when trying to adjust or account for healthy user bias is the inclusion of comorbidities, as if more sick people happen to drink coffee at all times during the day that can affect the association. So in this study, the only comorbidities that were included in the model were diabetes and hypertension. And there are many more conditions that could potentially affect the association for coffee intake timing with all-cause mortality risk. For example, did people have liver disease or kidney disease or lung disorders? These were not included in the model, unfortunately. So when it comes to epidemiological studies, look for at least these four variables in potentially trying to account for health, healthy user bias. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more of my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I've just included a new Patreon tier. And that's a 95 minute video on what's optimal for 27 biomarkers as shown here. So this is a video that will only live on Patreon. It includes data from 40 published papers. So if you've ever gotten your blood test results and rather than focusing on the reference range, you wanna know what may be optimal for health and potentially longevity, check out the video on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use that help support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests, the clearly filtered water filter, at-home metabolomics, oral microbiome composition, NED testing with Genfinity, epigenetic testing, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also the DNA methylation test Grimage, green tea, dye tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.